ending, would you take one moment, if you'll take one moment, introduce yourself to uh, two sisters in this room very quickly. Would you find two sisters you don't know? Introduce yourselves to them very quickly, two sisters you don't know. the Lord. Come on, clap your hands if you're glad to be alive and glad to be here tonight. I'm so uh, appreciative for your presence and uh, grateful uh, that uh, you pressed your way to be here. Would you lift that hand? I'd like to pray for you tonight. I'd like to pray for us tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will kidnap every distraction. Anything that's going on in our mind, we ask that you'll put it on a short leash. I pray, dear Lord, that you will contain our imagination. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll slow down our heartbeat. We pray even right now that you'll make our breathing easy. I pray that you will take away every discomfort in our body. I pray that you will suppress any migraines in our head. I pray, dear Lord, that you will give strength to our bones. God, handle everything that is connected to us. We thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands if you're excited to be here tonight. You may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I, uh, I've got a word that is so heavy uh, on me tonight. I'm telling you, I've been carrying it uh, since Saturday. Uh, and as a consequence, I'm going to go contrary to what I ordinarily do. I am uh, not going to ask you all to write anything. I don't, want you, <laughs> I don't want you to write anything. Go back and watch the replay later. Uh, I, I just want you to absorb it. You don't have to uh, take any notes uh, on tonight. I want to talk to uh, really the spirit of who it is that you are. And uh, you can uh, really release all of your intellectual property uh, to another time, uh, but I really need you to hunker in and uh, really hear uh, what it is that God has to say. In route uh, to so doing, let me say uh, just uh, a couple of things uh, so that you can finish sending that last text message. Uh, let, me, uh, uh, let me thank Shaka Khan for our praise and worship tonight. Thank you <laughs> so very much. She did a great job. I mean, she put it all out there. Such, a, such an amazing gift. I'm grateful uh, for her. Uh, this coming Sunday is the first Sunday in February, uh, so it begins a Black History Month. We're inviting all of you to wear African attire uh, on uh, Sunday. If you don't have that, uh, wear red, black, and gray. Now, we're going to uh, the Word of God. I need you to do me a favor, please. Would you just uh, take a deep breath? Take a deep breath right where it is that you are. Take a deep breath. Uh, and now I want you to uh, exhale. And now I want you to exhale again. And now I want you to exhale a third time. Genesis chapter 18, verse 11 through 13. You ain't even got to open your Bible. Don't even open your Bible apps. I don't want you to do nothing. I don't want you to do anything tonight but just receive and absorb. Just receive and absorb. Everything that you forget, go back and watch it again. Anything you forget, uh, go back and watch it again. Genesis chapter 18, verses 11 through 13. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, hear Sarah's language, after I'm worn out, not after I'm old. <laughs> after I'm worn out, and my man is old. <laughs> she didn't say she was old. Said, <laughs> said the man I'm with is old, but I'm worn out. Here's what she said. She never said, am I going to have a child? She said, am I going to have pleasure? I can handle having a kid, but will I feel good again? Then the Lord said to Abram, watch this, why did Sarah laugh? 
and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? I, I want to uh, share tonight uh, using as a subject, uh, the sister is just tired. The sister is just tired. This is going to be one of those messages. You ain't got to turn to your neighbor. I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to you. I'm, again, I don't need you to bring out no Bible, no pen, no notes. I'm, I just want you to absorb uh, and listen. Even if you just got to close your eyes and just take in everything that I am taking, telling you on tonight, I'm telling you this, what I am sharing with you tonight is dispatched from the throne room of God. I, I don't know the weight of being a black woman. I, I do not know. So what I am getting ready to share can only come from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I want you to know that the, the Holy Spirit sees you, hears you, feels you, and understands you. Uh, and tonight he's going to confirm some things for you. Uh, I wanted uh, you to uh, uh, just uh, declare out loud, I'm tired. I'm tired. I, I, I want you to say it like you feel that thing. I'm really tired. Let, let me say it another way. Would you declare out loud, I didn't realize how tired I am. Yeah. 50% of black women, 50% of black women are the sole breadwinners for their household. Comparatively for white women, it's only 30%. Chronic disease. When I read this, I almost threw the computer across the room. Uh, chronic disease, watch this, rises up for black women as they climb the socioeconomic ladder. Wow. So black women get sicker, hear this, the more successful they are. For white women, they get sicker, the poorer they are. They discovered, hear this, the CDC discovered that black women's health gets worse the better they do well in corporate structure. Why? Because their stress goes higher. And that stress then begins to live in their bodies. I read uh, an essay uh, by uh, a sister that I wanted to read uh, just an excerpt of it. Uh, here's uh, what this woman said. She said, uh, it is just draining being a black woman. The generations of high blood pressure is the curse. Having to be strong for everyone and everything is exhausting. Some nights I can't sleep. And some days I have to pretend that I went to sleep. Why do I have to be strong all the time when that is not expected of any other human being on the planet? I am tired of being a strong black woman as if strength is my badge of honor. Why do I have to get extra credit just for being strong? I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to the sister who's sitting next to you, and that sister is you. Uh, <laughs> tired of uh, having to lift dead weights when you don't have a spotter. You, you don't know how draining it is to have to be strong when you got a man. What, what, what it is uh, to be strong when you have to be the coach, the quarterback, the defensive end, the fan, here it is, and the ticket holder, and it is still not enough. It is draining being a black woman, knowing uh, that every time your black son walks out the door, he could be murdered. Uh, it is tiring to have to have your heartbeat accelerate when you wake up and check text messages because you don't know who in the family has had an emergency, who has had a crisis, who needs something and who is bringing you bad news. It's draining when all of the funerals you got to go to are out of town. Uh, it is draining when you have to sacrifice, when you got to cook, you got to clean, you got to wash, you got to iron, and then you have to deal with the phobia of obesity. Scared of gaining weight. Afraid of the weight's impact that you have already gained. Don't know how it is that you're going to lose it when every other diet does not work. And it is not because you're not disciplined, but because your metabolism, metabolism is wired differently. You get tired of people pleasing. I'm tired of people pleasing with people who were never pleased with anything. 
giving everybody a silver platter to eat on when they give you plastic utensils to feed from. Tired of giving your energy away for free from people who don't even qualify for your leasing program. You get tired of having to be superwoman with people who are intimidated by you being Wonder Woman. They have no idea what it takes for you to be strong and to be presentable. You're not even trying to floss. You're not even trying to be glam. But for me to just keep myself together is work all by itself. And then I got to fight another sister who mad because I put on lip gloss to cover up the tear stain that I'm dealing with. It is draining. It is draining just for me to remember that I got a hair appointment. I got to get my nails done. It's draining for me to have to get to a place where folk don't even understand that I hate getting my own gas, having to get my car washed. Folk got no idea what it takes for me to stop the blood from coming down my chin because I got to bite my tongue because I can't say what I want to say. Because while I'm a hardworking woman, I'm still trying to be a lady when I'm surrounded surrounded by immature girls who don't know what a real woman looks like if it was looking at her dead in her face and my blood pressure keeps going up. I can't even afford a sick day because I don't know when my child is going to be sick. I can't afford to take off because I'm taking care of me and my mama. She ain't even sick. She just burnt to the bone. And I got to explain to you why I'm taking care of my mother. Because I saw how it is that she had to labor and sacrifice. And the nightmare that comes is because I see myself as her. And I swore to God I was never going to be my mama. I was never going to have to be in that position. And I'm tired 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 and I finally get to God's house and I'm around other saved women that won't speak to me that look at me out the corner of their eyes and judge me without knowing me I'm tired and I'm tired and I'm tired I am tired because I was raised to say yes when my natural language is no. I'm tired because I'm made to feel bad for saying yes. I'm tired because I have accustomed myself to contort my mind to value being underappreciated. Why is it normal to feel unloved? Why do I have to come out of myself and be aggressive? Why do I have to push myself and push you? How am I expected to be the confidant and to be the counselor when you haven't even asked how am I holding on by a thread? I deserve extra credit that I'm not drunk, that I'm not high, that I didn't fight nobody, that I don't carry your switchblade. I know me. I feel unsafe, but if I carry your gun, a whole lot of people are going to be in trouble. I am tired. Think about how it is that my grandmother aged right before my very eyes that when I was a child, my grandmother was the age that I am now. But she looked so much older than what I look now because she had become withered and worn and brutalized just by the cold and the harshness of life, but still was able to remain sweet and kind and gentle and Christian. And I aspire to be all of that, but it takes work for me. Uh, just to ignore your text message. It takes work for me to pretend that I don't see your phone call. It takes work for me to you to talk to me sideways in an email when I was just trying to figure it out when you never trained me in the first place. I'm drained and I'm tired and I'm broken and I'm saved. And so every year of my life, Every year of my life since I was 16, as a black woman, I had a pandemic. Because they always told me, shut your mouth. You talk too much. 
why you always got something to say. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I've been in a pandemic my whole life because I had to social distance myself from the people who had more money than me that tried to make me feel less than. I had to distance myself from nasty older men who wouldn't even allow me to be a girl and wanted me to force myself to be a woman. I had to distance myself from family members who belittled me because I wanted more out of my own life. I had to distance myself because my curse is I was intelligent around ignorant people and rather than fostering the brilliance that was in me. They kept trying to take out my fire, but I kept finding my inner fortitude to keep going on. And I am tired and saved. I'm tired and saved, but the church can't handle my testimony. (laughs) I'm tired and saved, but I'm not sure where I can talk about my miscarriage. Well, I can't talk about my abortion. I'm, I'm tired and I'm saved. I don't know what to do because I may lose one of my breasts. I'm tired and I'm saved. I wake up and a patch of my hair is on the pillowcase. I'm tired and I'm saved. I invested my life in 17 and 23 and 19 years of my life in a relationship that hijacked a critical season of my life for somebody who I now realize was never worth the initial investment. Uh, It's a terrible thing to be tired and burned out and broken broken and saved and now the doctor's telling me I got a fibroid in my uterus is telling me I got a thyroid gland that is out of order it's telling me I'm at the risk of diabetes it's telling me that I am now skirting around depression and anxiety and it's telling me that I am at a place where I gotta watch my blood pressure is skyrocketing and you judging me over a single glass of wine if that's the only thing that's keeping me balanced and together you you think that's what's going to take me to hell? If you knew all the stuff that I was dealing with, I am tired and broken and I'm saved. Yes, I understand. I understand that there is such a thing as black girl magic, but nobody ever told me that my black girl magic would have to fight black women's voodoo. Oh my God, hallelujah. Because a lot of people don't like your magic because when they see your magic, they call you a trick. And they don't understand, I didn't do anything to get to where I am, but work hard and trust God and believe that God was gonna open up a door, but I am burnt out and saved. You get to a place where I gotta choose myself. I got to choose my own life. I got to choose my own peace. I got to choose my own circle. So the more saved I get, the smaller my circle gets. God, I can't hear nobody. The more consecrated I am, the fewer people I deal with. I don't come to a place, I don't let a whole bunch of people come in and out of my house. I'll meet you there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When I was young, I'd ride with everybody, but now I'll drive separate. I'll meet y'all there so I can leave on my own term because I don't have it within me. Tired, I'm burnt out, I'm broken. And here's what's crazy about me. With all of that, I still believe God. I still believe God. I need some woman in this room to just declare out loud, I still believe God. I want to offer uh, to you a book. Do not write it down. Go back and watch the replay. I don't want you writing nothing down tonight. Listen to me. Uh, The book is called Sacred Rest. It's called Sacred Rest by uh, a black sister by the name of Sandra uh, Dalton Smith. Uh, She's a medical doctor uh, and talks about the health needs and requirements of uh, black women. Uh, She suggests that there are three areas of rest that elude sisters. Three areas of rest uh, that elude sisters. The first one is mental rest. It is mental rest. Tonight, sign the permission slip to make your mind stop running. 
you are already stressed about February issues. You won't even let January leave on its own terms. Uh, give your, your mind the space to quiet itself. You cannot talk through a good movie, which is why you never dream. I better say that again. You can't talk through a good movie, which is why you never dream, is because you're talking through the whole program God's trying to show you. You have to quiet your mind in order to enlarge your vision. At what point, while you are talking to yourself, have you left space for God to talk? Are you such a subconscious chatter that you're over-talking God? God's trying to talk to you, but he's in competition with your subconscious thoughts. And as a consequence, your mind has to rest. Uh, when is the last time you've allowed uh, your mind to have creative rest? That you're reading a book that has nothing to do with what you're going through. That you are reading a book, here it is, for sheer entertainment. When's the last time you allowed yourself to go to a museum and to just take in art? When was the last time you were able to explore your own passion without trying to figure out who else in the group is interested? Can you go to the black ballet, go to the play, just because you like it? Just because that's what you enjoy. I know nobody else listens to country music but you. Go ahead and watch it. Uh, whatever it is that's going to give your mind the capacity to rest uh, and to be able to unplug and do what it is uh, that you do. How in the world do you get to a place where you don't know what enjoyment is? You have spent so much of your life pleasing others and making sure other people were happy that you have lost what gives me joy. Come on, Anita Baker. What, what is it uh, that, that's going to give me a place where I can just do what it is that I enjoy doing? Clutch your pearls. I'm getting ready to hit you across the face. That I enjoy doing that does not involve food. Yeah. I done lost half the crowd right there. Number one is you have to have mental rest. Number two, listen to me, number two is physical rest. Physiologists agree uh, that the human body requires eight hours of sleep, eight hours of sleep a night in order for the cells to repurpose themselves and to synergize and come into alignment. The average black woman, the average black woman only sleeps five and a half hours a night. Only sleeps five and a half complete hours a night when your body requires eight. So you're waking up tired. Are y'all still here? You're waking up tired, and so you're not doing uh, barbiturates or morphines or opioids. Uh, you got to do uh, a coffee, a latte. I didn't, nobody making eye contact right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by 3 o'clock, you need a Snickers bar and a pack of M&Ms and... Uh, something else just to keep you going uh, because you feel better about yourself as a saved woman because you ain't going to happy hour, but you're taking a whole liter of Coke down. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't even know when your nightstand became a cupboard. <laughs> All the snacks right there. In case y'all didn't know what I was talking about. It, I mean, <laughs> you too lazy to even walk to the kitchen. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do an altar call right here, y'all. <laughs> Is that find, find the strength, find the strength and the God in naps. Did y'all hear what I just said? Find the strength and the God in that. You can't sleep through the night, find you an hour. Come on, I can't hear nobody in here. Let, let me, for those of y'all to keep it 100, even if you got to do it in your car. <laughs> just make sure you're in a lit area, this. 
You're going to have to have rest and find, here it is, uh, passive rest is a nap. Aggressive rest is actual sleep. Passive rest is a nap. Aggressive rest is sleep. Uh, the third uh, area of rest is uh, uh, a hard one. It's a hard one. Um, it is sensory rest. Sensory rest. Turn the TV off. It's going to mess you all up. Unless you got toddlers or you've got a ill older parent, plug your phone on the other side of the room. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, you, you are not a neurosurgeon on call. Nobody needs you. You getting up at 1 a.m. checking to see your phone is dry as the Sahara Desert. You ain't got to check for nothing. Put your phone on the other side of the room. Or the other part that it does is it dismantles the false god of Baal. That you have set up an altar for Android. You have made a temple for Apple so that before you do anything, you check the phone before you check with God. Oh my God. It, it, it ain't vibrated. It ain't lit up. Ain't, ain't no movement happening. But you got to check that first because we've made that our deity. Sensory. How, why is it that you need three and four lights on in order for you to rest? Why does something have to be going? What activity needs to be going? Because you will not give yourself sensory rest. You are seeing through your uh, device, your tablet, uh, your uh, iPad, through your phone. You are seeing 10,000 advertisements a week. 10,000 advertisements a week. And you don't even know why you online shopping all the time. Because the subliminal plant has been put into your mind, here it is, in places where scripture used to rest. Yeah. So you ain't thinking about Psalms, you think about shoes. Yeah. Do me a favor, just turn yourself in. If you got three things in your basket right now, just blink at me right there. You got three things. I ain't tell you to raise your hand, no. Yeah, we, we need a deliverance service just for that. All by itself. Uh, and so uh, God is calling you, hear this, God is calling you to mental rest. He's call, calling you to physical rest. And he's calling you to sensory rest. I wanted to uh, take a moment and do an uh, autopsy uh, on Sarah. And I wanted you to see a couple of things because I am afraid Sarah has gotten a bad rap. Uh, and I think that we have uh, vilified her unnecessarily. And so I wanted uh, to look at Sarah uh, through a fresh set of eyes. Uh, because uh, regrettably, you uh, see uh, Sarah through a contemporary lens and don't really understand the anguish uh, that she's had to uh, live with. Uh, theologians, biblicists, and historians uh, suggest that uh, when the angel came to Mary uh, to tell her that she was with child, that Mary was around 14. Uh, you have to remember in Jewish culture, uh, at 12, uh, you go through a bar mitzvah, which makes you a man. Uh, so beginning at 13, you could start getting married. Uh, so s stay with me. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go out on a limb uh, and say that uh, Sarah got married at uh, 18. And that's a stretch. So meet me halfway. Let's say she got married at 16. She gets married at 16, and um, she's uh, raised in the church, and she marries a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> and so she spent the most uh, bulk of her life between the farm and the church. And so because she's lived between the farm and the church, she has to know something about seasons. And learning about seasons, how many seasons has Sarah had to go through going to the church, hear this, as the first lady and the mothers asking her at church, why haven't you birthed yet? Hmm. Let, let's take that to 25. Let, let, let's go now to 30. And uh, she goes to her high school reunion. And uh, 
her high school reunion, the girls who were always jealous of her anyway uh-huh. are now asking, you, you and Abe ain't done nothing yet? Come on now. Come on. Yeah. And those who have just a modicum of discretion are asked, is it you or is it him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Are, are, are y'all still here? Yes. Let's jump up and make a 40. At 40 years of age, now she's got at least five godchildren who she loves as if they are her own. She's buying them more gifts than the biological mother is. When they're going through crisis, they confide in her, telling her stuff they're not even telling the mother. By the time she's 42, they have placed her with insensitivity as the head of the youth department. Said, you got time because you ain't got no kids. <laughs> you, you ain't got to go to PTA. You, you ain't have no games that you got to go through. Uh, and so we're going to assign you to this because you seem sweet. Can you imagine what she's feeling now at 50? Because at 50 now, she's having the onset of menopause and she's starting to feel hot already in the Mediterranean sun. Uh, she bringing a, a funeral home fan. Y'all ain't saying nothing. She, uh, she, she got to bring an old book. Some of y'all don't remember. A cool drink of water before I die. She, uh, she, she's got to uh, wear the finest linen because she's finding herself in a place where she is overwhelmed in it. She is, I, I would imagine, probably uh, going to all of uh, the women on the path. She's gone to all of the circle with the sisters. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, she done volunteered for all of the trips on the women's missionary department. She has been a part of the mentoring program for the young girls who are at the University of Jerusalem who are uh, trying to find their way. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, she has uh, become uh, the exemplar teaching etiquette class in the fellowship hall, showing them what is the appropriate length for your skirt at how you ought to wear your hat. Ladies of the church, they don't get tattoos and uh, they don't do all of that kind of stuff. That's what Sarah is teaching now. She's 60. Now she is 60 and at 60 uh, years of age, um, it has uh, come to settle on her that maybe this ain't God's will. Yeah, she's at peace. She ain't even mad. Yes, Lord. It just ain't going to happen for me. It's, and I'm okay with it. It's, I've had a good life. Me and Abe are okay. <laughs> You're only laughing because I'm talking about you. And uh, <laughs> I'm able to dress the way I want to dress, drive where I want to drive. We go on trips. We go out to eat at least once a week. It's okay. We go on group trips. It's fine. And now she's 70. And at 70 years of age, um, her gait is not uh, as quick as it used to be. Her bones are a little bit more brittle. Uh, she's got to uh, see about a hearing aid. Uh, she, she's not sure whether she's got early dementia or whether she's losing her mind. I need you to hear this. Losing her mind because of faith. Because if you're not careful, faith will drive you crazy. Oh, y'all ain't here today. Faith, faith will make you reevaluate some things. Faith, I will put you in a position. Was it God that really said it? Or, or was I just hopeful? Was I just ambitious? Was I overreach? Y'all ain't never been there? Where, were you trying to second guess God? Did you really promise this to me? And now we find Sarah at 80 years of age. And at 80 years of age, uh, her husband Abram is uh, at a mambri tree. He's at a mambri tree, and uh, the Bible records for us in the first two verses that uh, three visitors show up. Some would suggest that they are visages, or they are angels, or they are holy uh, representations. And Abram is excited because he recognizes that these must be presents from God. I wish I had time. I wish I had time. If I was in a preaching uh, context, I would uh, tell you the cross-pollinization between those three men who may have probably been the precursor to the three wise men that came to see Jesus. Uh, but I, I don't have time to do that today. But you, it's the only time where you see three men coming together around a kid. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's not the same representation. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to come off course. Uh, and these three men are there. And uh, Abram, watch this, volunteers. It says, be our guest. Stay with us. We want you to, um, uh, to come in and have a, a meal with us before you go. Now I'm somewhere, me to mention, I'm somewhere around verse number six. And he comes in the house and says, Sarah, cook something for these visitors. Sister's tired. You didn't even give me heads up that we were going to have guests tonight. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You, you got three strange men in my house who I have not prepared for, I have not equipped for, and you had the nerve enough to give them the menu. You, you told them what we were going to eat tonight. Y'all got to read your Bible when you get home. You, you told them what I was going to prepare without checking with me. And... Uh, how uh, those, those three spirit beings uh, say um, probably the most offensive thing you could say to a saved, burnt out woman. Here's what the Spirit of God said. Watch this. Not even talking to her, talking to Abram. Uh, says, uh, 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 in a year's time, she'll have a kid. I serve God. A God who can do anything. Don't, don't clap yet because I'm going to hit you upside the head. L listen to me. Please don't clap yet because I, I need you to understand Sarah. Listen to me. The God who instantly can turn water into wine. God who instantly can make blind people see. A God who instantly can make lame people walk. Uh, but he says, watch this, not even to Sarah. But to Abraham, in a year's time or so, God, in a year's time or so, then you will give birth to a son. I need you all to stay with me. Sarah, here it is, in low estimates, has been waiting on God 65 years. Y'all ain't here. Been waiting on God for 65 years. I'm telling you, y'all ain't going to shout tonight. And after waiting 65 years, God says, wait another year. Now the tree that wasn't bearing fruit, you told the tree they had another year. But I've been in posture and in position. I've been faithful to what you've been telling me to do. And now, God, you telling me I've got to wait a whole nother year for what I've been waiting 67 years to get. I've been waiting 67 years while I threw baby showers for girls who weren't married. God, God I can't hear nobody. I, I, you're going to make me wait another year. When I became the godmother to children whose mother really don't even want them. God, y'all ain't in here. How you you going to make me wait another year when my lazily unfocused sister having children year after year after year and now you done made me stigmatized and ostracized and talked about. After I waited 67 years, God, how you going to make me wait another year? And regrettably, ladies, as I come to a close, I, um, I only can wonder aloud, what was the year Sarah stopped praying? <laughs> regrettably, the text gives me no insight, but the fact that she laughed means she gave up on her own prayer. God, I'm getting ready to leave you. God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm talking to some women that got an issue. It may not be about a kid. It's about something else. It's about home ownership. It's about getting married. It's about being debt free. And God had you come tonight uh, because God says, I'm getting ready to address, thank you, Holy Ghost, what you stop praying about. I, I, I know it's been draining. I know it's been tiring. I know it's been a lot, but how dare I didn't give you permission to stop praying. You still got to pray when you don't see nothing, when nothing is happening for you, when there is no sign and there is no evidence. I know this is the year of answered prayers. 
But what if I stop praying it? And, um, I only have one point to this message. You may be seated, please. I only got one point. E everything else that I've shared with you tonight, uh, take it or leave it, take the meat, spit out the bones. I only came tonight because uh, God quickened something in my spirit um, that I was to give to you tonight, and that's it. I only got one assignment. God told me to tell the women of new birth, the women who are in this room, I'm telling you, at its pronouncement is going to set 73 women free. God says, I am getting ready to answer the prayers you prayed before you got burned out. Oh my God, listen to me. He said, the prayers you prayed when you still had fire, when you still had energy, when you still had zeal, when you still had excitement, he said, forget the burnout prayers because the burnout prayers was for survival. But I want to take you back to the season you were in when you trust God for crazy stuff, for outlandish stuff, for ridiculous stuff. God said, I know you've been burnt out, but be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you are going to reap if you faint not. What was the prayer you prayed before you hit the wall? What was the prayer you prayed before you had to become a caretaker? What was the prayer you prayed before you downsized your lifestyle? What was the prayer you prayed before you became an empty nester and you got to negotiate for your kids to call? Said so that's the prayers I'm getting ready to answer. And I want to show you something, ladies, and I uh, hope that you'll receive it. Isn't it amazing that after 80 years, she got this call at 80, didn't give birth till 81. Isn't it crazy? After 80 years, the whole church knew what she was waiting on, knew what she was dealing with. All of her family knew how long she had been bearing, all her sorrows knew how bad she wanted it. And after 80 years, none of them threw her a shower. God, I can't hear nobody. No, nobody brought balloons. Nobody asked what color to paint the room. She says, I took this time to separate you from people who couldn't see you beyond what you produce. You help me. I ain't gonna let other people climb onto your wagon after you done came through a lonely season. He said, I needed to see whether you would rejoice by yourself. And trust me that my gifts and my promises are yay and amen. I don't know where you are, but I wanna see if you got a little fire left. Within the next year, whatever you've been waiting on for years, it's getting ready to happen for you. You better rejoice, even though you should have got it in 2012. You should have got it in 2018. It ain't too late for your prayer to be answered. Lift up that hand for me, please. That hand is lifted. I, I want uh, whatever sound is natural to you and your frustration for you to take a moment to just call and cry out to God. Because tonight, you don't have to be strong. Tonight, you ain't got to keep it together. Tonight, you ain't got to pretend like it's not impacting and affecting your life. God says, I need you to crawl out to me. Because Sarah stopped calling. She stopped praying. She stopped believing. And so it had to come through somebody else. 
Would you take one moment? Would you just call out on our God? Just communicate to him your frustration, your level of burnout, your anxiety, your misgivings, your vulnerability. Come on, call out to him. A sister is tired. A sister is tired. A sister is tired. I could just fall out and lay down right here. A sister is tired. I don't even feel like going home tonight. A sister is tired. Sometimes I can't even open them emails. A sister is tired. I'm sitting right there. I ain't doing nothing. I will watch the phone ring. A sister is tired. I don't even feel like going over the story again. A sister is tired. I pray for the peace of God, the strength of God, the rest of God to be able to visit you in this moment, in this hour, and in this space. I pray that God will revive you. I know you wouldn't admit it in any other context. I pray God will revive you until you feel like praying again, until you feel like talking to him again. Until you can trust him at his word. Until God knows that you still got another year in you. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? I ain't got too much after that, God, but I got one more year left in me. I need you to do it for me. I need you to do me a favor, please. I want you to embrace three sisters around you, three sisters around you. Listen to me. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. You're going to embrace three sisters around you. Don't give them that fake church hug. <laughs> What's a fake church hug? Where they pat you on your back twice. Don't, 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 give, don't give me a fake church hug. I need you to give them a, a warm embrace. They need it. And here's what I need you to speak over them, not strength. I want you to embrace them and speak over them one word. That one word is rest. Listen to me. Because starting tonight, their body is going to rest. Their mind is going to rest. Their senses are going to rest. Come on, you're getting ready to operate in the ministry of the oil that's on you. I want you to hug that sister tightly. You don't even know how bad she needs it. Come on, hug three sisters around you. Speak over them. Rest. 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 You deserve it. You need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. And the honor. And the honor. We lift our hands and rivers and we bless your holy name.
Come on, clap your hands right where you are. Sarah asked just one question. She didn't ask, will I produce? She asked, will I experience pleasure? I speak over every woman's life in this room, every woman online. This is a year that you're going to feel good. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, this is a year. You're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to feel good about what you look like. You're going to feel good about what you're doing in your life. Come on. You're going to feel good about your children. You're going to feel good about your assignment. Come on, you ought to celebrate. I want us, uh, the atmosphere is ripe in this room. I, uh, I want to uh, stretch you just a little bit on tonight. Uh, as many of you that can and will, as many of you that can and will, uh, would you get a seed uh, as close to 100 as you can? You don't have 100, get, get as close to it as you can. Don't feel bad about what you don't have. Just get your best gift as close to 100 as you possibly can. Uh, behind me is uh, the lower thirds in just one moment uh, on how it is that you should give. Behind your chair, you'll be able to scan that QR code. Bless the name of our God. You're giving uh, through currency, uh, cash, however it is that you want to do it. You're writing a check. You're writing it out to New Birth, Zell, Give the five, push, pay, text to give. Those of you who are online, I'm compelling you even in this moment. Compelling you even in this moment. Those of you who want to release your seed on the altar, you're able to do it. Do it as expeditiously as possible. Otherwise, our servant leaders in yellow are coming to help facilitate uh, your giving on uh, tonight. Ladies, were you blessed by coming tonight? Are you glad you came? Y'all don't sound like I said, were you glad you came? Amen. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, for uh, sharing uh, with us. Uh, can we uh, give our uh, women's pastor, uh, Dr. Carrie Turner, a big hand uh, for her leadership and for what she's doing? Grateful uh, for her leading us and giving us this opportunity uh, to share. Uh, would you stand? I don't want to take a risk of somebody being in this room and they're not saved. I don't want to take the risk of somebody being in this place and they don't have a relationship with God. I would never forgive myself. I want you to stand for just one moment. Stand for just one moment. Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? One, one of my favorite quotes is great. I, I, I want you uh, ladies, uh, would you do me a favor? Uh, is, for some of you, it's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. You're going to ask a, a lady around you, is she saved? You're going to ask her, does she have a church home? Uh, but before you ask her any of those things, is she saved? Does she have a church home? I want you to compliment her. Amen. Say something nice to her, something nice about her. Come on, would you do that? Would you do that for me? Girl, you got the prettiest smile. <laughs> Lord, I love them shoes. I wanted to ask you what kind of perfume you got on. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. If we got a saved house tonight, clap your hands. If we got a saved house. Amen. Y'all want to do this again? Y'all want to come together again? Amen. All right. Uh, we'll let you know. Uh, tomorrow night, I, I, really, um, I really want you to come. I know you were here Sunday. I know you're here right now. <laughs> I want you to know I'm tired. Amen. <laughs> you just got restored now, y'all. Y'all throwing the miracle away. Amen. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, listen to me. Uh, tomorrow night, I am uh, going to give you keys. I'm going to give you the formula the blueprint, listen to me uh, very carefully. Tomorrow night, I am teaching probably one of the most critical lessons you need for this year. I'm going to be teaching you how to pray for an hour. How 
to pray for an hour. Jesus asked of the disciples, can you not tarry for one hour? Amen. You, you, you can watch a whole series on Netflix. I'm, you gone, gone on to season two. Uh, but when it's time to pray, you're going to go right to sleep. Amen. If you pray or read the word of God, it's going to cure you of insomnia immediately. Uh, but I, I want to give you the blueprint on uh, how to pray for an hour. Uh, this whole year is dedicated to prayer. Uh, and I want you to get the disciplines of prayer, the rubrics of prayer, the principles of prayer. Amen. Uh, it's got to be more than shouting and clapping and dancing and screaming. Uh, but what you're able to do in your quiet times of meditation, uh, I want you to have it. Please make sure uh, that you are here uh, tomorrow night. You're going to have to bring a pen. Amen. Uh, you're going to have to take notes tomorrow tomorrow night. Those of you who are online, do what you can uh, to uh, join us here. Uh, don't forget uh, that uh, Sunday we are in African attire or red, black, and green. Uh, Thursday is the premiere of our uh, new podcast. It is our premiere uh, Thursday. You can watch it on uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Play, uh, uh, Google Play, and uh, iHeartRadio, all of those uh, things you'll be able to uh, uh, see it there. Uh, and so I hope that you'll download it uh, for exclusive content. You can go to uh, uh, jamalbryant.org uh, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, uh, no, you don't watch podcasts. She asked me what time. It'll be there all day. It'll be there all day. <laughs> it's just going to sit there all day long. Amen. Lord, help the people. Help the people. Amen. It's going to be there all day uh, on Thursday. And good news, if you miss it Thursday, it'll still be right there Friday. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, as beginning on Thursday, all day and every day thereafter, uh, ask that uh, you'll please uh, watch it. I pray for your pastor. I'll be on CNN Thursday morning at uh, 8 o'clock uh, talking about the... Uh, conflict in Palestine and what is the responsibility uh, of the church and as believers. So uh, th Thursday at 8 o'clock uh, ask that you'll uh, check your boy out. Amen. Uh, thank you uh, so very much. Pastor, you have anything? All right. I uh, ask that you'll lift your hands to receive the benediction. Oh, I thought y'all gave it. All right. Put that hand down. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Come on, yellow jackets. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And the basket is already up here. Thank you. Those of you who are online, thank you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you so very much. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, 8 a.m. is what time I'll be on CNN on Thursday morning at 8 a.m. And the podcast will be playing all day Thursday. Yes, all day uh, Thursday. Uh, come to me. Yeah, yes, you. You, come here, please. Uh -oh. I ain't got no oil. You okay? <laughs> Thank you. She did this only to taunt me. If you see her, I'm going to turn it in because I ain't going to say nothing after the day. She got on this Kansas City Chiefs t-shirt. It's all right. Yeah. That is my only acknowledgement for the week. I'm not saying nothing else about the Super Bowl never happened. Uh, but uh, those of you all who were uh, cheering for uh, Kansas City or for Detroit, uh, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's lift up your hands. Yeah, the oil has left me. I'm tired. Now I want to him who is able to bless every woman with rest. May he anoint you to rest your mind so your mind will not keep running all night. May God give rest to your body so your organs, your cells, and your blood will be able to recalibrate itself. 
May God give rest to your senses. May the Holy Spirit block every negative text message, every unnecessary phone call, redirected to voicemail. Whatever it is that you don't have to entertain, may God keep it away from you on tonight. May God rest. May God rule. May God abide with each and every one of you. Henceforth, now and forevermore, the blessed people of God said amen. amen. God bless you. Your pastor loves you. See you tomorrow.